Welcome to SpartaPrimes.com, no contest wrestling podcast. I am JP. I am with Tank. Yep, JP and Tank. Uh, today we're going to talk wrestling. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about AEW, WWE, and we like to give our takes from the fans for the fans. Um, Tank, before we start off, man, how you doing, man? A little intro. How's things going for you, man? Hey, man, I've been, I've been doing well. Um, this week has actually been a long week. Hitting the gym, uh, hard, hard. Um, still trying to recover from my, my kidney surgery, you know, so trying to get adjusted to like trying to get back to my normal lifting routine which is tough because yeah. i still feel like fatigue and stuff like that. but other than that you know i thank god every day for a new day man so i'm blessed hey man that's you, how's everything? well i'm about to get busy man work's picking up um uh, you know but uh i've been hitting the gym doing what i can staying busy so i'm just like i don't know i like i don't like to have too much downtime so i'm glad things are picking up um we got hill country comic-con coming up in a about yeah yeah about a month yeah about one month out so we're gonna be going to hill country comic con excited about that um excited to see the convention to see celebrities there uh hill country comic con new Braunfels is really entertaining it's really good stuff uh especially if you have like uh the, i know it's really good for for kids like uh especially if you're a parent you want to take your kids there it's like one of the best cons to go to um excited yeah. about that be my, okay, i'm excited bro i'm excited when you're talking about it i was like yeah let's go First time, I'm, I'm I'm down for it. I'm down for it, man. Like, I'm so ready uh, just to get out there and meet the people. Um, speaking about people, man, for all you fans out there, don't be afraid to comment. Comment on us. Talk to us. Let us know what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, if we got misinformation. Or simply like, hey, man, I like what you talked about here. Can we elaborate a little bit more? We want to know what, you, what your thoughts are so that way we can make this for you. That's right. And uh, you know what? I enjoyed the com- we did get two comments, Dragon Maws. And another guy was talking about um we were talking about our take with uh Orton and Riddle, and he kind of brought up it was very similar to Kane and uh Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. Right. Yeah. It was it was a it was a great show, it was very entertaining. So I'm excited yeah. to like talk to the fans more. And it's cool, like because you know, wrestling is growing. Um I feel like now um speaking of let's just get right into it. AEW had a live show and uh it, it was in Austin, Texas. Well, it- Smoking, bro. Smoking hot yesterday. Or not, you know, you're I our AEW guy. Go ahead. Tell us how you feel about AEW. How you feel about it? <laughs> again, I am an AEW like fanatic, but yesterday's show was just on point. Uh, there was some stuff that, that I, I didn't appreciate also, but I'm gonna start you off with the good. Right at the bat, the best promo of the night, and everybody's gonna everybody's gonna talk about me. Uh, talk about it. Britt Baker, Dr. Britt Baker, man, she cut a fire promo against Nyla Rose and Vicky Guerrero. It, it was just, she is supposed to be a bad guy, right? She's supposed to get that booze, all that stuff. She's like very cocky. That's her attitude. Yesterday in Austin, she got popped. Like everybody was like popping for her, but she still was able to pull off that whole like that bad guy theory. Um, one of the quotes that she said, she's like, you know, um, Nyla Rose is just trying to, like, get her name out there. And let, that way nobody forgets her name. Unlike Vicky the Little, the only, why she, the only reason why she's relevant is because of her last name. And that's wow. it. <laughs> yeah, bro. When, she's, when yeah. she said that, like, the crowd just, boom, erupted and stuff like that. So um, uh, there was, like, a ton of great promos last night. But to me, like the more entertaining one was that one was on point just because she was simply able to do something that like a lot of veterans um, still can't do. She's supposed to be heel, got pop, but was able to turn it and still keep her persona as being heel, still if that makes heat. sense. She still kept her heat, just threw a great yeah. little jab at her. And, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm a heel. I love the heels. I love the bad guys. Um, especially when they're like they got good comebacks, you know that was a pretty good jab. Like that's something that you would think that nobody would say. Like, oh my god, no one who would say that to her because you know Eddie Guerrero, rest in peace. You know he's a sensitive subject. You know if you disrespect Eddie too much, the fans will won't turn and they'll hate you. You know Eddie yeah. loved, but um, dang, that's I can't believe she went there, man. And that was pretty yeah. that's pretty cool, Vicky. I wonder like uh, you know like maybe ten years from now. It, they'll probably be like a, a interview, like, "Hey, well, did uh, did you talk to Vicky Guerrero before saying that you were going to say that, or did you say that without telling her?" And I can see like the future YouTube videos of. I can't wait to hear what comes out of that one, man. That's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah, it was good, man. Like, uh, I'm sure Vicky like gave her the okay and stuff, and um, let her use it and and whatnot. But it was just, it was just good promos. Um, another good promo was Dark Order um, versus the Elite. 
which is Hangman Page is finally challenging Kenny Omega for the belt and stuff like that. That was like a huge cowboy. Sh- <laughs> that was that was no, a nice. <laughs> But it was fired up for that. So that was a that was a that was a deadly uh, promo also on both their parts. I think they both play the roles so well. Um Hill versus good guy. I love um, the way Kenny, I, st- I love the way Kenny yeah, because when Kenny goes, you need to make a lot of demands for the guy that wants all that has nothing. You know, I'm the champion. I love the way he subtly reminded him, I'm the champion, I make the decisions, and it's just like he so subtly let them know that I'm the champ. I dictate this like a real heel should. Like, I run this, okay? And I'm la- allowing you to dictate. And then when he threw it back on him, I thought that was brilliant, dude. I thought it was a great – yeah, that was a great promo section, man. I, I thought it was good. Yeah, it was, it was a good promo. It, it was really, really – it was good. It got me going. Like, I'm excited. And, like, um, like you know from before, I follow um, Being the Elite vlog, their vlog that they have on YouTube. Yeah. So a lot of the stuff that takes place with Dark Order and Hangman Page is on that on the YouTube channel. Oh, wow. Um, so, yeah, you see it translate, and you see how they slowly built it up um, on the vlog. And you see how, like, Adam pa- uh, Hangman Page is going through, like, this whole, like, I can't do it. I can't win. The struggle, and then finally, like, boom, snapping. And the Dark Order is like trying to convince him, like, "Hey, you can do this. We got you. We got you. We're your boys." And so, uh, so yeah, for him to finally, yeah, yeah, for him to finally, boom, step up and do it, it was killer, man. It was killer. It was killer promo. Yeah. Um, I don't know but, if Omega, man. I don't know if he's gonna beat Omega though. I, I don't. Uh, I don't see it happening. Uh, I see it being a great fight. I see it being a steal. But I just don't see him beating Omega right now. Um, I think maybe he loses this match. And, like, you know how they're saying about his confidence? Mm-hmm. What I could see happening is that he loses this match, and then his confidence is shook, and then they, he, they, he, rebuilds, he rebuilds himself. And then mm-hmm. to the point where the next time they go face-to-face, yeah, I'm ready to take it. Um, but I, I just love that whole, se- that whole sequence, man. Um, but Dark Order came out, then Elite came out, and I was just like, well, how about we do the tag belts? How about we use all the tag belts? And I was just like, well, how about yeah. you put your belt too then? I was like, let's go, let's go. I want to yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah. Right, I'm looking forward to that match, man. So you're, you're an outside AEW, not like you're watching and stuff. So you see, like, how they how the Young Bucks, like, turn that hill and they, like, live that hill persona. Yeah, I like, even that- just, like... Yeah, um, even, no. just the, yeah, even the right? clothes, bro. Yeah, even the clothes that they came out in, you're like, what the hell? Wait, look, I, I, I'm not going to give him a full pass on the clothes because I remember I, I sent you a Rico Suave pick the other week, man. I was like, that's like Rico <laughs> Suave and, and, and it should not be allowed in 2020 era. But um, it was funny. Entertainment-wise, they have are entertaining and, of course, they're good wrestlers. But uh, there were some things that AEW I didn't agree with. Like um, there was a match that we talked about last time. I believe it was Ethan Page and um, oh, Allen. RB Allen, there you go. Okay, it was pretty hardcore. It was super hardcore, man. Mm. There were some big man. They took some man. I know there's wrestling terms for it, but for me, man, they look. They took some aches and bumps and and bruises. I mean, I, I was thinking that Darby Allen doesn't look like a not an insult to him or not not to take any credit from him, but he looks more like a cruiserweight. I, I say above a just above a cruiserweight. He's not a cruiserweight. He's like mm. just above it. Um, he was taking some serious lumps, man. I'm just thinking like, okay, um. I know it's our for a live show. I know everybody's back. I know AEW. I, like wisely, I see why AEW did all these like gimmick matches because WWE is still in the Thunderdome and they have a week to get the jump and for wrestling fans to check out what wrestling looks like and with when in the crowd with people how different it is. And I thought it was real smart on AEW's part that they did all these gimmicky matches to get people's attention and check it out. And I'm just saying like if I've I noticed he took a fall, but um, like a little cinematic match a couple months ago, and I'm wondering, like, man, how's he gonna keep progressing? Cause that, I mean, he's a strong guy, but like, look, Jeff Hardy, uh, one of my favorite wrestlers at the time growing up, you know, he got addicted to painkillers, man. And this guy, he keeps taking these falls. I know he could say he's mentally tough, but you know, you and I both know age yields for nobody. So one day he's gonna be an older mm-hmm. man. He's gonna have to get out that bed without hurting himself. And yeah. I always hope this doesn't continue, man. It's it's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I even see WWE getting a little more hardcore, and I understand it's because now they have competition. So it kind of made me respect Vince a little bit. Now hear me out. Um, you know how this man didn't have competition. We say the wrestling's not as entertaining it used to be. They don't do all these cool things, and it was right. But at the same time, he was protecting his athletes. And at the same time, mm-hmm. remember, like, you don't really see too many power bombs now. You don't see too many like bruising moves because he was protecting his athletes or, or protecting his superstars. I really want to call it, but. 
now it's like because there's competition and because now like they're losing wwe is not doing well um even if like the numbers say they're doing okay but they're on the decline i feel and yeah i love the wwe and i've noticed like the last week um it's getting better the show's getting better and but the brutality is being raised i see like we're slowly going back to the uh, the attitude era man like you know ruthless aggression so i like that but i just think like as a fan who like supports wrestlers and you know i think wrestlers you know you want them to have a good end of career life you know what i mean so i mean i just hope this isn't this may be the new trend but you know if you do car crash after car crash after car crash for each show like where do you stop you know what i mean when does it end you know See, and I, and I I completely agree with you. It was a it was a rough tough match that you'd probably see pay per view wise. Um, yeah. But again, it's 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 just about like drawing the fans in. Like, hey, this is your opportunity. We got to show out. This is where we got to show out. This is how we got to do it. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm all about protecting the the wrestlers themselves. Um, I do I do get kind of like a little bit. Um, like, I get a little bit, like, uh, complex about, like, how Vince McMahon is taking care of his people, only because a lot of the times, remember, when they first came out, they were, like, videotaping, right? They're videotaping their live sessions. And what happens is <clears throat> they're able to, like, cut, all right, go back and do it again, cut, go back and do it again. And that's how Edge got hurt that one time when he was supposed to have, like, the greatest wrestling match of all time, right? Yeah. And he got hurt doing that because of so many takes, so many takes, so many takes. Um, I see yeah. it as completely different. Um, he does protect them as far as like chair shots are concerned. Um, oh, different time. things, yeah, yeah, different things like that. But like keeping them on the road, house show after house show after house show after house show, that's tough, man. That's tough on anybody. It's just like on a baseball uh, baseball player. You know, baseball players are on the road. They're playing like almost close to 200, 200 games, two hundred plus games. Yeah. Um, and I think the differences you do see. Is that like Darby Allen? You haven't seen him wrestle for a little bit. Like he's he's been like little like splotches, but yeah. he hasn't really like gone out and wrestled and wrestled and wrestled. So I think like it's it's really him saving himself for like big spots like that. But you're you're completely right. Like yeah, but everyone <laughs> the ending, bro. The ending of that match itself, that was, I was like, great. as a fan, I yelled like, oh, sh like you know. Um, like what we're talking yeah, about, we're, we're, well, let's tell people in case they didn't see it. Um, yeah, yeah. I think mean, it was like a power bomb, he got power bombed on the steel steps, or was it like suplex? Oh, yeah. And no, uh, no, he got power bombed. That's that's um, Ethan Page's like little maneuver, yeah. The and Eagles, he calls, it, he calls it the Eagle's Edge. Well, he put the Eagle's Edge on the steel steps, and the steps did not give one bit, but you saw his it looked like his body broke, man. Mm -hmm. So he put the match, uh, he puts him in the coffin, they close the coffin, and he. He jump. He goes to the top rope, and the coffin's outside the ring. He jumps out on from the top rope to the coffin, turns his back, and falls yeah. back. I mean, I'm like, dude, this kid's got stones, man. Like, yes, <laughs> the, the respect, the the stones, the courage to do it. What is that move called? Because it looks like a. It reminds it's me of the. It's called the coffin drop. Okay, the coffin drop. Well, your coffin mm -hmm. drop. The coffin drop. Well, for me, the coffin drop looks dangerous because I'm like, dude, how does he not hurt himself yeah. in that? Like, and. I mean, it was just a gutsy move. Uh, I just think that, like, you know, longevity-wise, he can't be doing this on a regular basis. But it was mm -hmm. a great match, and uh, hopefully they won't get carried away with it. But it was a great match. Yeah. I saw that, and I saw a little bit of the – I saw it recently. I, I've been checking it out because, like, you know, if I'm going to critique something, I got to watch it, you know? Yeah, yeah. But um, – No, it, it was good, man. That was a good, that was a good, that was a good end to the show. Um, both, both of them did an outstanding job, man. E even Ethan Page, bro. Ethan Page – I'm telling you, like he does some good promo work himself. Yeah, and um, he puts on shows, man. He puts on shows. He he lives his demeanor, like he's all ego and stuff like that. So I like that. Um, I know, like you said, you, you that was like the one like niche in it, because of the health price, right? Yeah, me honestly, I think AEW messed up because they're not showing enough of women wrestling. And yeah. that's where they need to figure that out, because they did had um, they did have the Britt Baker promo, which is fine, but then they had Penelope Ford versus uh, Sakazaki, which is she's like from New Japan, awesome. She's cool. She, they call her the Magical Girl. Yeah, knows how to, she knows how to perform. Penelope Ford knows how to perform too, but I think 
they're missing out on opportunities to build up their women's division. Um, I know they want to get all these big matches in, and a lot of it, a lot of the big matches happen to be like their hometown in that area. So that's why they're trying to fit those people in, which is cool, but you, you can't take away from where they need to build up, like where their future needs to be. And yeah. I think they, they, they had a big miss with the women's division yesterday. I think the that's WWE is actually pretty good with the women's division. I mean, I felt like they've really led the way for the women. Um, I think also back in the day, TNA Impact, before it got rebranded and rebranded back, like when the TNA was thriving, them women, if you look at those women matches, those matches were very physical, very physical. It was wrestling. It wasn't just glitz and glamour. They were going at it. Yeah. Um, I know for SmackDown, Bayley got hurt. And uh, the pretty cool is they used it in a promo. You know, Bailey blamed the fans that she got hurt. <laughs> it was it was really cool. And yeah. uh, they made the change for the money in the bank. Um, SmackDown had uh, Edge actually got his revenge. Edge's promos. I mean, God, dude, Edge. Every Edge time, has a good promo, bro. No, but every time he does a promo, it just reminds you how good the Attitude Era was. Uh, the ruthless aggression. I mean, it just reminds you, like, these guys, their promos are just another level. And I, like I said, if I was a young wrestler and I was aspiring to be a wrestler, I would just watch Edge's promo and compare it to like a modern guy. Not like knocking the modern guy, but it's just different. It's so much more intense, so much more believable, and so much like unique. Like, you know, like it's just, I don't know, Edge's promos have been fire. Like, I mean, he, I really believe he cannot stand Roman and wants to destroy Roman. And when Roman comes out, I feel the same thing for Roman. And I think that's why I like the traditionalists. It has to be believable, man. I have to, like, believe that you really want to go at each other and not, like, you know, we had a cage match, we beat each other up, and we're, like, high-fiving and on Twitter, you know? Like, so that, I think uh, that was a good one, except for Edge got his revenge. Okay, so he called out Roman Reigns, and Roman Reigns actually looked more like a face than a heel, if you ask me. Roman sold his brother. Um, okay, let me rewind it. So the Usos reunited. Um, they didn't talk okay. too much about uh, Jimmy's incident. They kind of just no. under the rug and said, "Hey, man, Jay came out. Let's just be. Let's do this. Let's stop playing around. Stop messing around. Let's be family again." So Roman got his family back, which I've been waiting to see. So the bloodline, the tribal chief, they're united, and they had a. Uh, the cool thing to see Jay and Jimmy working together, and they're like, "Hey, we want to have watch your back." But Roman tells them, "Hey, when I go out there to confront." edge because he's calling out my manhood it's one-on-one -on -one, don't help me he said yeah. and made roman actually look really good even though he's a heel it's like i love a heel that will do something like that because a lot of times the heels they always make them look cowardly right but when you got a heel who's a bad dude but he'll like that's like stone cold level stuff you know that's what made stone cold good even as a heel like hey i'll still i'll still whoop your beep 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 and i'll be right there to fight you no thing don't doubt about that i'll be there like so roman comes out and when roman comes out to confront edge edges in the middle of the ring uh the usos come out and then roman gives them the look like what did i tell you because you know he's a tribal chief you do what i say he goes we're just here to watch your back and so roman goes in there they go at it and man they are they're boom 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 it's good i mean you're watching you're living you're you're in the moment and all of a sudden like uh you hear mysterios like i think music comes out so it's like jay and them turn and then the mysterios come from behind and hit them with chairs and then they both gang up on roman and they put roman and that, that, you know, he has like that nightstick and he puts it in his mouth. And it's kind of like the crippler cross face. They're going to do that to Roman, but they got the Usos and did it to U Usos. And they're doing it and they're taunting Roman. And you see Roman's face and he's just like, you're going to pay for that. And it's like really cool because now it's family. He just got his family together and they destroyed his family. But truthfully, it's payback. But see, this is why I like Roman. He beat, he beat Mysterios up on his own. He 1v2'd him. Um, destroyed ray uh threw dominic out the ring he didn't do it because the usos helped him he did it because he's a bad dude so because he got trashed this week i think he's gonna destroy them on money in the bank i really think it's gonna be a one of those things where uh roman and the usos come out looking like violent they come out looking powerful so i expect them to get a squash this weekend and money in the bank that's my pick for that but that that was raw that's what i got from raw and it sucks to see Bailey hurt because Bailey is man, she's great as a heel too. I know Bailey. Yeah, she you know she could be. She was arguably on path to be like the female John Cena with you know the, with the hugs and all that stuff. But she's you could tell she loves wrestling. She's a I love her as a heel. Um, and she it, it I don't know. I hope she stays heel for a while. I'm not ready for her to go yeah. face yet. And SmackDown, we were talking promos. Um, Lashley, Lashley got beat. Like, you, got, you got it backwards. Raw had the Lashley. Uh, Raw. 
Rawhide last year. Forgive me. Thanks for correcting me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got you. I, I, I would, you. I would listen to replay mad at myself. <laughs> like, but uh, <laughs> uh last year had a match with uh Xavier Woods, of course, Kofi's oh, yeah. there outside, MVP's on the outside, and they lost the week before. They lost in a tag match. And you and Lashley looks more intense with every loss. And then he was the man. If you watch the match, he he threw Xavier Woods all across that ring, man. He threw him on the steps, threw him off the pole, threw him off the floor, threw him out the ring, threw him around, beat him down, speared him. And then he got distracted and then he got rolled up for a pin. And he he leaves the building. And then they talk to MVP. And it's cool because like I don't know if they're trying to make MVP and Lashley look like He's like an MMA athlete or a boxing athlete who just got caught up in the glit and glamour, glitz and glamour and all that good stuff. But um, they basically fast forward to the inner night and uh, MVP has his show set up and he has the girls out there. They have the champagne out there. Lashley comes out and he's like a suit, like torn cuffs and everything. Like he's been either he tore his sleeves off or he was out beating people up. He comes in and he uh, he says, like, this is enough of this. He goes, I lost to Xavier Woods. Like, he's disgusted with himself. I shouldn't be losing to anybody. And then he's just like, I lost to Xavier Woods. That's embarrassing. So he basically tells MVP in so many words, cut the bull. It's over. Uh, get these girls out of here. Get the champagne out. He destroys it. He throws the chairs out the ring. Like, he picks up a big couch, throws a couch out the ring, throws out the furniture out the ring. And he cut the best promo. And personally, as in my opinion, that's like probably about the best promos he ever cut. He goes, I should be, they should be obliterated on the ground for me beating them both down. I should beat them both down at the same time. And he goes, it's time to get back to business. So when I heard that, I'm like, wait, he said time to get back to business. And I remember, I don't know, I was trying to find the other clips. I'm trying to remember, I saw MVP with said, with the chain that said THB, the Hurt Business. So I'm hoping this is either, it's one or two things. Either they're gonna bring back the Hurt Business, which they really need to do because honestly, since the Hurt Business, I mean, those two other guys haven't done much. I mean, Benjamin's an amazing wrestler, right? But the Hurt Business, people were behind the Hurt Business. Even as heels, people were behind the Hurt Business. And if they bring back the Hurt Business, it makes sense because Bobby Lashley shouldn't be doing these tag team matches. He shouldn't be doing all these one-offs. He's the champion. He should be having the people under him do that. And that's why he needs his own faction. That's what I would prefer to happen. But the other way it could go is either maybe they are bringing back Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar made a little appearance late recently at an event, had a little ponytail. So I'm thinking, well, they're increasing bra Lashley's intensity and changing his demeanor to confront Brock Lesnar. And there's even another fan had a theory that said that uh, MVP is going to betray Lashley and support um, Brock. And I just don't see that happening because it just doesn't look don't believable. That. It doesn't look believable. Um, I could see if maybe he went to SmackDown and challenged uh, Roman for Paul Heyman. That would be interesting. But I really see it going the way as like I don't know. I just feel like Lashley's gonna take another step, and I think he's gonna destroy. He's probably not just gonna beat Kofi. I think he's gonna destroy New Day. Um, but Kofi is capable of winning, and the fans are ca- will get behind Kofi Mania. So that's what makes this interesting. Um, there was a new rumor going out that they were gonna break up the New Day, and that Big E would win Money in the Bank, and when he went Money in the Bank, he'd cash in on Kofi if Kofi beats Lashley. It's a possibility. That'd be, that'd be a pretty yeah. little good little storyline. Yeah. So, uh, but because I think it got brought up because um, they said that Vince McMahon had considered breaking up New Day a couple years back, a year or two back. And then well, they're, they're kind of like they're, they're kind of like broken up because they're on two brands, two different brands, and so so. But it, it was just like it, it was just like last night, and it's a good thing you brought it up because the hurt business. Um, and then you brought up New Day, and we could jump right into it. Yesterday, my boy. Absolute Ricky Starks. Okay. Absolute Ricky Starks. Nice took the F- took, took the FTW championship from Brian Cage, and yeah. that's when Team Taz, Team Taz like uh, Will Hobbs went and hit Brian Cage with the belt. Uh, Starks picked up the win. He's now the FTW champion. So big old congratulations to Ricky Starks. Congratulations. Um, yeah, yeah. But you see, that was like a big change right there. Like it was Team Taz, like all Team Taz, and now it's um. Brian Cage on his own and stuff like that, so he lost the belt, and we'll see where they go from it. And it's just funny that you brought it up because that faction was awesome, man. Team Taz faction was like Brian Cage was a beast, Will Hobbs is a beast, Ricky Stars is he's just good, all round good wrestler. And then they had uh, there's too many. In their I think I think the only problem with AEW their factions are too big. They have a lot of factions. They, they're, yeah, they're, they're way too big, dude. Like. It's it's like um I'm my thought process is okay maybe they're going with all these extra people and like 
the cream rises to the top and whoever doesn't make it, they just get cut out eventually. And then this is it. Then I, I if that's the process, I get it. But like, if they really, that's you're not going to follow everybody on that crew. Yeah, yeah. Like, no, my, my theory is this, bro, is before pandemic happened, their mm -hmm. ultimate goal was to get to get that, uh, that trios uh, championship belt. Mm -hmm. Why you started seeing more and more uh, factions getting together. Yeah. So that way you have three on a team to wrestle three on the other team, right? Just call, I think that's what happening. just call it the state yeah, yeah. championship. I mean, yeah. and the cool thing, this is my just off the head um, faction championship. That way, you could throw any three of your faction out there. Yeah. So, like, say, like, um, oh, like, let's say if it was like in the WWE, and let's just pretend like uh, Roman, the Usos, and who'd be another person we could throw in there that would be like a fourth member, like a uh, we'll pretend Jimmy. Uh, if, they ever brought up his, if they ever brought up his brother, his younger brother, the yeah, Usos yeah. brother, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you, yeah, there you go, four. So, and let's just say, like, okay, we're gonna go with the Usos and the younger brother, and then you find out the other fact just putting out their world champion in the match. Okay, let's bring Rome. Well, Roman's gonna step in, and that'd be kind of cool to talk about and taunt, and like that would be interesting. Um, yeah, faction belt. This is this, this is what I sorry, my bad, my bad. I want to just jump in. This is this is what I want to happen, bro. Yeah. I want to see, uh, like elite, right? They have their, you know, the elite, whatever. Slash bullet club. Um, slash bullet club. See, yeah. but if you see the online chatter, mm -hmm. the bullet club that's in New Japan, they're like, you're not the bullet club no more. Oh, I would wow. love for one day, bro, one day to see elite like beating up somebody, and then all of a sudden you see all the bullet club members from New Japan show up and be like. What? What's up now? Well, it's possible because we had a, they had a <laughs> match with Moxley and uh, Anderson, which was a great yeah. match. Uh, if you like wrestling? Yeah. If you like wrestling, that was a damn good match. That was, um, that was the best strong style wrestling. Strong style wrestling. What do you What do you think of uh, John Moxley's theme song, bro? Oh, I can't get enough of his theme song. It's a good one, man. I like I like it. Yeah. Um, it's the, I haven't, I haven't still as much where it hasn't really sunk in. Be honest with you, so I'm gonna give it another listen before I give you a, a real review. I'll give it another listen. Is it good? You feel like it's? I, I kind of just um, to it. What? I I just kind of coasted. I didn't catch it, so I was kind of multitasking. So, um, so let, let, let's think back to uh, you watch you watched um, Major League Baseball, right? Oh yeah. Ma uh, with Vince Vaughn when Vince Vaughn Whoa. comes in. Are you serious? Uh, yeah. that's, okay. that's, that's that that's a theory song, bro. Yeah, that fits Moxley. I can see that working, man. Um, who's, yeah. running, who's running Bullet Club right now in New Japan? Oh, jeez. I, I, I won't even give you a name because I don't want to mess up the like the title of his name or not, but I know who it is. And Tamatanga, what was his name? Um, in New Tama Japan. Tama is the one that goes and he, like... Oh, he man, goes I, and he talks a little smack, yeah. Dude, he is insanely brutal, dude. That guy can do a promo, man. And mm -hmm. I, I, I would love to see him and Kenny. Like, if he was in charge of the Bullet Club and he came at Kenny, I, I think that would be, I would be excited for that. But, I mean, that, that's, yeah. oh man, there's just so many ways wrestling goes. So I say it's just a great era in wrestling. I mean, honestly, we had NXT. We could even really talk to NXT or even TNA. There's just like, um, what's his name? Um, in NXT. Samoa Joe, um, Mandy Rose, they're adding more stars. And they do have stars already. Adam Cole, obviously. Um, it's getting interesting over there. And the NXT is getting <laughs> really interesting. And uh, Adam Cole, baby. Which you told me today. Hey, hey, say, yes. hey let's cancel. I didn't know that. Uh, so what everybody, what everybody don't know about Britt Baker. Britt Baker and Adam Cole are together. Mm. And so um, Britt Baker takes after like Adam Cole and tries to like – uh, learn from him and, and whatnot and stuff like that. Because when Britt Baker first came out, she was supposed to be a face, not a heel. And then that's when they said, I, I forget who it was. I told her, hey, you just need to go heel. And she's just been straight up heel. But yeah, yeah, that's her together and stuff. So it's a trip to see. It's a trip to see because they're not the only ones. Um, Cedric Alexander, his girlfriend or fiance or whatever is in AEW as well. I believe there's a couple of other ones like that too. but. Um, a lot of people don't they didn't know about Britt Baker, but yeah, I didn't know that. Man. Colby neither, yeah. And then she's an actual dentist too. Well, she does it all, man. Talented lady. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah, I, I liked her. I caught her more when I was catching a Thunder Rosa and her going at it. Oh, that was, that was bad. That was an epic I match. That was an Thunder epic Rosa match. It's just amazing. I, I, I admire her work ethic out the ring, and then it's her, what she does in the ring is amazing. She can, she goes. 
He's a scrapper. That's a, man. That's a shout out to San Antonio. San Antonio. There you go. There you go. Um. So yeah. <laughs> just, let me let me get one more before we. Uh, yeah. What do you think about uh, what do you think about Cody Rhodes and Malachi Black yesterday? Did you see it? Did you catch it? I thought they did it too quick. Like the the yeah. conversation was too quick. I thought that was way too quick. Like they like. Oh. White. Huh. What about what about their outfits, bro? <laughs> I love that the black versus white, the good versus evil. I like that because you know, like Cody could easily represent good because you know his he's Dusty's son, and Dusty was like honestly like for me, part of me like I d- identified Ro- Rhodes as positivity even when he's doing his bad because like Dusty Rhodes is such a positive character and he, he like in real life. So to see Cody being represent the light and him representing the darkness, I think it totally works because and honestly like. I just wish that I hated the way they did it. I wish they would have teased us a little bit more. Like, why have them go at it? Like, why? Like, they just took his head off. You could have had Cody go out there. He could have cut his promo and called it, or he could have done something to taunt him, and then not get in the ring. Or like, you know, I said, I'll, I'll, I'll fight you on my time, my terms. I mean, you don't run, you don't run this, Cody. You ain't a big deal. I'll do it when yeah. I'm. And yeah, yeah, I like that. I, I like and and like, why? Why do it so soon? Like. Yeah. Dude, in week three, I'm and like I said, I'm not a professional, but just as a fan, I was just like, yeah. it was rushed. Like, why do it so yeah. fast? Yeah, I don't know. That, yeah, I, I was um, I was pretty pumped when I saw the black, the good versus evil kind of concept. Yeah, yeah. You know, what, you know what it reminded me of though is I don't know if you remember that that uh that game or the comic Spy versus Spy. Yes, yes, <laughs> it's like Mad <laughs> Man Magazine. That's <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, I would make like a meme making fun of them, dude. Just doing it because like, be silly. like, like, do you know, like the head of the spy versus spy? Yes, yeah. Really, they put one on him facing each other. Matter of fact, let me see if I get on that canva.com and like, <laughs> like, that would be funny, dude. But uh, I saw it, I was just like, oh, dude, wait, am I really thinking that way? But I thought good for Eve versus evil. You know what's the next thing I thought after my mind after I see all that? After I saw that, right? White, black, good versus evil. You know, the next thing that popped in my mind was Undertaker Shawn Michaels. Yeah. Yeah, I couldn't help it, man. I just, like, literally just robbed me back to that WrestleMania. But, um, hey, man, we're at our 30 minute mark. It's been a great show, man. We definitely, yeah, yeah. again, man, I enjoy talking it. Uh, and uh, thanks for bringing it up, Tank, man. Thanks for encouraging. Yeah, guys, well, we'd like to hear your comments. We'd like to hear your thoughts on wrestling. Like, um, you know, it's always good for me. I'm always the type of person, like, you know, I don't always have to be right, but I like to hear other people's perspective because, like, maybe you see something I may not see or Tank sees. And, like, I don't know. I just think it's good good for conversation, good for wrestling, good for good fun. Like, the guy who said that possibly, like, what if Heyman became Lashley's uh, new advocate? And it would be interesting. But, you know, I just – I like to hear stuff like that because it creates conversation. And, you know, I love to talk wrestling. Tank loves to talk wrestling. Um, thank you for the likes. Thank you for the subscribes. Uh, we had a lot of views on YouTube. Had a lot of views on um, on our podcast as well. So I appreciate the love and support. We can keep working hard for you guys. And uh, go ahead and comment. We like to know what you're thinking. Anything for the people take before we go? Well, just the same thing, man. Don't be afraid to comment. Um, make sure you go to SpartaPrimes.com to check out the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I'll be posting it up on my Instagram page, which is Bless the Tank 33 on instagram so that way you can go check it out and stuff like that i'm always like posting videos and whatnot so also um we're gonna probably start doing some like little wrestling shorts on youtube like maybe when we get a chance to like we're gonna do like a little short cut clip on see if something happens like say you know mandy rose shows up at nxt we me and take me put a video out just talking about that the next day and we're still working on an event but hey man i was thinking we should get like the new uh i was talking to my other buddy uh king ramen ramen king on twitch and asian savage on twitch they're big wrestling fans, and I was telling him about we do the podcast. He's like, man, why don't we just go ahead and get that uh, WWE 2K? And, like, you know, we can't show the pay-per-views on Twitch because we'll get we'll get mm. copyrighted. But we could play WWE 2K and watch wrestling and talk with the fans um, for pay-per-views. And that's something that we've been working on. Um, like I said, we would love to be able to put the pay-per-view on and watch it and talk with y'all, but we can't. But if we play WWE 2K and we talk wrestling and watch as it go, we can still discuss and talk about wrestling so that we're putting that in the works in the future so we're really excited about that don't forget follow tank on instagram follow sparta primes on instagram and me at sparta prime on instagram uh follow us on twitter facebook and instagram and any other social media you have you got a new one hey actually you're on twitter now i caught you on twitter yeah yeah yeah, i'm on twitter i'm on twitter now all right you guys have a great day let glory be your story we will see you at spartaprimes.com